And it's gotta be Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another ah, crap. Woo. Welcome to yet another episode of Color Commentary, where we give you views from a different side. Of course, I'm your host, Rashad Waters, and I'm the owner of Block Band Music and Publishing, a company that provides music and instruments for marching dance all across the nation. We are gonna be talking about Ready Player One. Ready Player One is a brand new movie by Magical director Steven Spielberg, an icon in the industry. Uh, pretty cool movie that's come out. It's had over 300. Whoa! I don't know why I'm making sound effects. <laughs> uh, well, over 300 Easter eggs and references to pop culture in this thing. And uh, it's pretty been pretty interesting. So we're going to go ahead and get in get into this movie to let you know if it was good or bad. I'm just going to jump right into it here and start out with uh, Mr. Charlie P. Taylor over there. Charlie, why don't you tell us who you are and what did you like about Ready Player One? Well, I'm Charlie Chuck Taylor right here. Uh, part owner of KFH Party Easy. We do parties of all types. Uh, but you know, um, I like I like Ready Player One. I thought it was a pretty good movie, pretty good watch. You know, I enjoy enjoyed it. Um, enjoyed the you know the story. I enjoyed you know seeing the different I guess the the different sides of the movie. Seeing you know seeing a virtual side and also you know getting into the you know the actual you know the real the real side you know when, when them actually in the real world. So seeing that, seeing both of those parts play play together in the movie were pretty fun. Um, I like seeing all the old games that I used to play uh, or watch other people play. And sometimes I was a little too young to play some of the games that they were playing, so I would watch them play. But uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked the movie. I thought the uh, you know the world building did pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, the world building. I, I like. I actually thought the uh, virtual world was was pretty cool. So I, I kind of was able to understand you know, what everybody was addicted to. You know, being able to be somebody that they that um, anything they want to be, um, regardless of what they look like or where they were financially. So I definitely I could see how that kind of remind me of the framework with the shield shield show. Hold on, let's see. I gotta beat this dude here. All right, there we go. Watch out, dude. They're playing Mario Kart, <laughs> but um, you know, I thought the humor was pretty pretty good too. Um, I like I like where they energetic the humor in the movie. Um, I thought it was was well put. Um, I laugh. It was it was it was somewhat predictable on some things, but it kind of reminded me of um, it's kind of like they fuse like a Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Chocolate Factory, and uh. Rocket, was it? Uh, what's that other show? Uh, what's the other? Um, Rugged Ralph, Rugged Ralph, when they were jumping into video games, so kind of like they had those two fused a little bit. So I could see, you know, everybody is like saying that it may be a little predictable and maybe it didn't make some sense on some on some parts, but I didn't really think it had the most sense. I didn't, I didn't take it that serious. That it had to be like okay, everything has to make exactly I know all the sense. It wasn't saying like you know, it was like oh, this room. This room was like we go back <laughs> in. You don't even want to go into that. Now that don't make no sense. This has had most of said hey, they want the guy died. He, you know, he left some keys around. We had to find basically like a whole kind of like a treasure hunt. Everybody had to go search. I thought it was pretty cool. Mommy, definitely a Charlie Chocolate Factory. You know, the logic of it. That was one of my favorite movies too. So, I I like I like most of most of the movies. I thought it was pretty good. What about you guys, Danny? What you what you think, man? Um, I think I'm lagging. Am I lagging? I'm not I think sure. So. Nah, dog. You good? You straight? Get that guy behind you, though. Get that guy behind you. That controller. You lagging now, Chuck. 
<laughs> I got this whole control. I haven't got my, my upgrade yet. I didn't get my headset and my my uh, Oasis upgrade yet, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit behind. You see, I got the old school Mario and Sonic on because I'm 33 years old and I played games back when they were real games, not this <laughs> this fluffy fairy tale stuff. Um, <laughs> if you can't tell, I did not enjoy the movie. Um, I did not come to the to movie for the film part of it. I came to the movie to to be nostalgic about my favorite things that I you know grew up playing, and um, I didn't get those things, and that's why I did not like the movie. So no here I am with my old school. My old school handheld <laughs> virtual reality goggles, just Sonic and the main man Mario. But this is the what did I like section. So I will say, from a film perspective, it was nice to see. Uh, it was nice to see the girl gamer thing included. That's a that's been a big talk in the gamer community. Involving you know female female gamers and and not being as uh, as uh, not harassing the female gamers as much. So I enjoyed that because there were two uh, female gamers that were you know kind of um, main characters in the story. So that was pretty cool. Um, I didn't like that the girl um, was um, the girl did not. Well, she, she made a joke. She said that oh I don't look like this. I don't look like this in real life. And then when he met her, like she was still fly. Like that's not right. That, that's not <laughs> how it's supposed big, to go. She had a big pink, had a big pink uh, birthmark on her face. You know, uh, that was it. That's what I was talking about. Ooh, that was like <laughs> complete turn off. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's not I how it's supposed was to happen. Artemis, <laughs> Artemis was supposed to be some some 400 pound uh, woman <laughs> who. Like was the the complete opposite of what her avatar was. She even said it in the uh, movie. Oh, when he was like, "Oh, I, I'm in love with you. I watch all of your videos. I I do this. I do that." She was like, "Oh no, you don't. You don't know me. I don't look like this." And then, just so happened, she stayed right down the street from him. I don't know how that happens. Um, and she went and picked him up, and <laughs> and. And um, she looked just like her avatar. I mean, she wasn't that much different. So I didn't like that. I mean, oh, this is what I did like. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. It's it's a it's a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> um, People, <laughs> I liked to see. Uh, I like seeing Ryu. I just like seeing the uh, the the Hadouken was dope. That part was dope. Um, the the concept of the the movie was good, even though I didn't come for the film. I uh, I enjoyed the the youth versus the corporation, the young versus the old, and the you know the capitalist versus the um, social gaming um, things. I enjoyed all that. That was pretty cool. I didn't know that that was going to be in it, so it was kind of uh, kind of surprise surprising for me to to see that in this kind of a movie. Um, I think the the actors were actors were done well, especially Percival and um, Percival's actor and um, what's her name Artemis. They were cool and um, and the the video game scenarios were okay, but not for like old school gamers. I guess like this new because I haven't played video games in like two years. I'm not up on this new stuff, but old man, old man. I'm the old man. Now. Like, I'm the old, old man. man. That's what I felt like watching this movie, like an old person who <laughs> used to be a gamer. We <laughs> didn't game anymore. But um, that's about all I liked. I liked a couple of things about the movie, but all together, I, 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 it was a disappointment to me. What about you, Ashai? Did you enjoy anything about the movie? I, I did have a couple. I did a couple of things that I like. Uh, but real quick, tell them who you are, then. We get Charlie to go ahead and pub his stuff. Well, who are you? Oh, my bad. It's your boy Danny J. Quick. You know what it is. Um, <laughs> owner of Fourth Wall Productions. Uh, I'm right. Ace Blade, King Supreme, comic books. Um, I'm back. I was gone last week. I apologize. I was here in spirit. Um, I gave my mini, my mini uh, reviews um, by proxy last week. So uh, I'm back. <laughs> he loved it. 
<laughs> yes. Welcome, we're glad to have you back from from France, there, sir, the international traveler. Yes. Hey. Stuff, man. <laughs> hey, man, uh, there's a couple things that I I did like about the movie. Um, I appreciated the fact that the movie was such a love note to popular culture. Like there were so many Easter eggs in it from TV shows and movies and comic books and video games. And matter of fact, there were so many things packed into it that I really didn't appreciate it until I watched a couple different YouTube videos about it. And I was like, wow, like there is a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of characters in this. I mean, from DC to Street Fighter to Halo, I mean, all kinds of stuff. That was pretty cool. Um, and with that, you could tell that no one director knew about enough of that type of stuff to be able to include that in there. But you could tell it was a large team of people that knew what they were doing and loved what they were doing to put all that all those references in the movie. So I thought that was pretty cool. I liked all of the challenges too. Like the first challenge, like when he was uh, driving backwards, and, you know, he was mm, just looking at everybody else get wrecked, <laughs> and uh, just how he figured it out. I really liked that part and how he was able to get past Kong and everything. And then the second challenge, how the girl figured out, how uh, Artemis figured out that uh, you had to jump on the zombies and go from one to one in order to get to uh, Takira. I thought that was really cool how they did that. Um, and even in the last one, where the black dude was like playing the, playing the game with the joystick, you know, and he was <laughs> like everybody else was, was having this war behind him, and he's just doing this battle, and then he wins the game, and he still loses. Like that was pretty cool. I like. Um, I really like the reveal of H, uh, being a lady, uh, perhaps a lesbian. We don't we don't know. We assume that she was, you know. But um, I think it's really cool. I mean, we've seen lesbians in in movies before, but it's always the more more feminine ones. It's kind of like you don't know what their preference is. It's kind of like you assume that they maybe like uh, men, I guess, but then you see two ladies and like they're interested in each other, you know, but this one was different. Like she was um, just a, a different type of, of, of person. And I really like that they included her in the movie because those people exist, you know, like you can't ignore them. Those people exist. So put them in the movie. That was, I thought that was pretty cool. The battle scene was really cool. Overall though, I really wasn't emotionally, it's crap. Dang it, Danny. Get, I'll get you for that. I'll get you, you for that. You and, you and Sonic. I'm trying to concentrate. The battle scene was uh, pretty cool overall. I really wasn't that emotionally invested in it, though. But I really liked how they flashed back and forth between, like, real life and the game. Like, with the Halo guys, and they were running, like, in real life, and then back to the game. And then the Ninja Turtles, like, the little kids were, you know, kicking and punching and stuff. And, of course, um, Chucky. And I think, didn't they cuss when Chucky was in there? Like... It's effing Chucky. <laughs> I think they did what they say. That. That. Man, Chucky. <laughs> when they threw the Chucky, that was hilarious. That was hilarious, bro. And then uh, last thing I liked was uh, T.J. Miller's character. Like, he was amazing all the way throughout. Like, 70% of, like, all the laughing I did in this movie was from him. Like, everything, every joke that he threw landed. Like, it was hilarious to me. So a lot of times in the movie, I wanted to laugh and I didn't. But when he was doing stuff, I, I laughed. What was really funny, though, was that I really thought he was Jack Black. Like, he acted just like Jack Black. Like, somebody doing an uh, in, in term. Jack Black. <laughs> that was the other review that realized, oh, that's T.J. Miller. Like, who the heck is T.J. Miller? I don't know who that dude is. Uh, I'm curious though as to what happened to that dude's real character. Like everybody else, you got the chance to see their real life person, but we never saw him. I don't. I don't recall seeing him. Let's, we talked about what we like about it, so let's go back and see what we didn't like. So now, uh, Charlie, when you fight your battle, sir, apparently you're going to be the contrarian. You didn't like it. And Danny didn't like Danny actually saying a whole lot. So let me put the game on pause. Hold on, I'm going to pause it. <laughs> um, me too. I'll put my game on pause too. I need to go I'm to my, my hat off. I'm going to take my hat off. Now, this was a movie, Ready Player One. It was about video games, nostalgia, um, pop culture references, right? So, right. you have a movie that's about video games, nostalgia, and pop culture references, the top, if you were to, to have the top three list, if you would say, what's the top three video games? What's the top three pop culture references? What's the top three things people are nostalgic about? 
this person right here would show up. <laughs> Close here we to go. the top of every list. How do you do a video, a game about video games? How do you move a movie about video games and not include Mario? There was no Mario in the whole game, in the whole movie. I don't understand. We didn't even get a one up sound. I would have been happy if they would have just did the do 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 if we even got the one up sound. Nintendo was like, no, you can't we can't be in your movie. Then you shouldn't have made the movie. Don't make the movie. <laughs> if you can't get so Mario, can't, if you're making a game about movies and you can't get Mario, then don't make the movie. Mario's <laughs> lawyers are like, no, we're not taking it. You know, y'all can pay us more. I'm not. I'm not gonna be in the movie. That they have Ryu. <laughs> okay, they have Ryu. Now the different. The difference <laughs> is like y'all know that I love Wreck It Ralph, right? Yeah. Wreck It Ralph had fictional games. Most of the games that they had in their universe were fictional. Like there were games that didn't exist. So I can understand them not having Mario in their game and their movie mm -hmm. because it's about a fictional world and it's about the central character. It's about one character, Wreck It Ralph. You don't want him overshadowed by Mario being your game in your movie. I understand right. that. This movie was about nostalgia, pop culture references, and <laughs> video games. <laughs> You're supposed to have Mario's in your video games. Okay, next thing. There was a big boss battle at the last scene. The last scene was a big boss battle, right? They had mm -hmm. Mecha Godzilla. Oh, I didn't even mention that. Godzilla is notoriously one of the hardest characters to license. If you got Mecha Godzilla in your movie, you could have got Mario. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Same country, too, Japan. I mean, yeah. Exactly. There was a. Oh, you Mario's I know. There was a huge boss battle at the end of the movie. Now, if you play video games back in the day, you know that one of the hardest bosses to to beat notoriously was Mike Tyson from Mike Tyson's Punch Out. <laughs> <laughs> he should have made an appearance somewhere in that movie. Somewhere in that final boss battle, he should have made an appearance. <laughs> like that was one of the first viral instances of, of video games happening with Mike, Mike Tyson's Punch Out and him being so hard. Okay, <clears throat> why was there no post credit scene in the movie? Right. We're talking about the movie here, not the post. What are we doing? Because that's why I came to watch the movie. The only Please reason that I wanted to watch this movie was because of the pop culture references, was because oh. of the nostalgia, and because of the video games. Pop the post credit scenes is what is pop culture right now. It's the one of the biggest right. things that's happening in movies. The post credits. That's true. They didn't have anything for right now. I don't remember. They didn't. Well, no, Halo. Halo was on there. The DC characters, like Batman. Oh yeah, right. Batman. They had Batman in there four or five times. Okay, now another thing. This this one is a personal one for me. The first challenge. Okay, the whole. They went through all of this talking about it had been months. Every people had stopped doing the challenge because nobody could figure it out. Nobody could pass King Kong. Okay, okay, whatever. The whole thing was that he needed to drive backwards. Anybody who has ever played a Mario Kart, Diddy Kong Racing, any of those games, you drive backwards. Like, you don't even do it on purpose sometimes. Mm -hmm. way, <laughs> they went six, five, eight, ten a year, eight months without somebody accidentally driving backwards and figuring that out. There is no way that happened. <laughs> If you play video well, games, hold on. He had to draw backers at the beginning of the race. Okay, I understand that. If you're a new, if you're a newbie and you are figuring your buttons out, you are going to accidentally go backwards. Like <laughs> what? it's one of the things that you do when you don't know how to play video games. So any some somebody should. What year is this uh, movie taking place in, Tori? It shouldn't have been that. That it shouldn't have taken that long to figure out to drive backwards. Tori, you remember that 11-year-old girl, girl that showed up, like, right at the beginning? Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? You remember her? Yeah, the one who was fighting uh, like, with the uh, Hello Kitty in her uh, picture thing. I think it was actually, like, it was, like, two little girls. It was one right at the beginning, and then there was one a little bit later. Like, either mm -hmm. one of them should have been the one to figure that out. Either <laughs> one of them should have figured it out. Either <laughs> one of them. They don't even have a driver's license. They don't know which direction to go in. They would have they accidentally went the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, one thing from uh, two more things. 
Um, the Shining, the Shining scene, the whole was it the second challenge that what? was that was based Shining. on the Shining? Really, I, I like that. I have not seen The Shining, so I didn't. I wasn't able okay. to connect to, to that. I just haven't you seen just, that movie because you, you know stop. that I don't watch horror movies. I don't watch horror movies. If I think it's gonna be scary, I'm not watching it. I almost didn't go see Acrimony because it was kind of scary. You so, said you want to see uh the Quiet Place. I do. That that's the exception. That movie looks like it's gonna be <laughs> awesome. But <laughs> if it's just straight up horror, I don't know. I can't do it. I still haven't seen The Shining, so I just didn't connect to that. I'm sure it was great. You know, Stanley <laughs> Kubrick. You know, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. Movie. It's a masterpiece of. But I haven't seen it. And then the very last thing that I have a problem with that I'm going to mention is that the whole um, Artemis uh, Percival's whole reason that he won was because he accidentally had a one up chip in his pocket. He didn't even he wouldn't have even had that if he didn't accidentally what he bet the uh, bet the library dude and he uh -huh. just made him take the one up. And he just happened to have it in his pocket. This one person, like, I understand, okay, if they would have said, okay, the chosen one will come and win this, then I would have been happier with that. But well, they need, they, they, the they need to have a prophecy. They need to have a prophecy with the video games? Yes, if they would have had a prophecy with the video game, <laughs> I would have been happier with him, the principal, being the one who had the one up and then winning the game. But, like, hmm. that was just over the top for me. Him accidentally having the, the one up, him accidentally having it, and then him being the only one who had a one up. Like, why are you the only one who has one? First of all, <laughs> if that's something that you can have in the game, I'm sure a lot of people would have that. Like, and everybody's in the game. <laughs> yeah, if it's something that's available to the game, that's something that people would have. I I know when I have, if I'm playing Contra, I'm doing the other. That's another thing. They didn't have the Konomi code. There was no up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, select, start. And the whole movie is like the most popular cheat code to ever exist. And they didn't right. have it in the... What time? How long? Have I been going like 10 minutes? I'm... Yeah. I didn't enjoy it. I'm going to go back to my virtual enjoy. world. <laughs> there was too much for me to not like... For me to enjoy this movie, and uh, <laughs> it's it's, it's y'all's turn. I'm done. I'm just gonna. I'm. A, where's my control? Dan, I just want to know. But how do you really feel about this movie? Like, oh, you know, yeah. like Tell us how I just didn't really feel. Well, I mean, I didn't I mean, really feel the passion just then. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just didn't. You know, I wasn't feeling it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dan, we'll do something different here. So this is the first time that Charlie's been a uh, contrarian, and normally he would go next and then me but um i don't know if i'm gonna just unload my stuff and then let charlie just try to re rebuttal everything that we had to say so that's i'm gonna good. let you choose which one of us uh, is going to go next that sounds good let, let charlie uh try to redeem the movie because to me <laughs> <laughs> hey well the part it i don't need to redeem it i told you i liked it it was a good movie i mean i'm sorry if you know us, if everybody's not the old gamers and didn't see Mario Kart and you know Cry Me a River, I mean it's a good movie regardless. You know, it's, I mean I understand they didn't show your favorite characters. I mean a lot of my favorite, I didn't see no Madden up in there. Where's the Madden? Where's the football? That's all I play. I see no basketball players. I see nothing. I don't. I didn't. I didn't really care. I. I. But it is what I didn't like. That's that is the section of what we're on. So the things that I did not necessarily care for were just that nobody really had any consequences in the real world. Like somebody can just fly drones around and blow up citizens and nobody yes. calls and says anything. <laughs> that was a little like, you just killed like 30 people with bombs. Like you can't just, I don't care how big a corporation you are, you can't just go into places and blow up houses and nothing happens so <laughs> i mean people actually saw the drones flying around so i mean it's kind of like i mean you didn't see no policemen until the end of the movie when the whole oasis was destroyed so i guess all of them were playing the oasis at the time the oasis, they were playing right 
Um, <laughs> and and the other, the other thing I didn't necessarily care about was that the villain, I guess, they could have put some more meat in his backstory. I mean, just to kind of make him have a better reason of wanting to succeed. You know, I mean, yes, yeah, making more money, but I mean, your company's already making a lot of money. So if you kind of think about it, what he should have been trying to do was just stop everybody from looking for the Oasis so he could keep making money forever. Looking for the keys because they were already making trillions of dollars. But, you know, it was like, if I'm already making trillions of dollars, why do I need to own it? I just keep making people not win and we'll just keep making money forever. Right. And, you know, we don't have to do anything. But they were just so focused, like, I got to own it so I can put some more marketing material. I'm like, how much more money do you need to make? I mean, you're, if you're a trillionaire, you're making more than country. So, I mean, <laughs> you can do it really what you want. I, I didn't really see the need to go kill people and start World War II in the real world trying to kill little kids. You know, it's kind of ridiculous. So, those are my, I guess, my mainly dislikes of the movie. But to go on with something with Tori, it's like, Half the stuff you told me that you didn't like was just because your, you know, your video games weren't in the movie. I mean, it wasn't really necessarily the movie. It was just you didn't see what you thought you'd go see in the movie. Yeah, I didn't get what I came for. I came for something, <laughs> and I didn't get that from the movie. <laughs> That's why I didn't. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I'm the, I, 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 I enjoyed the movie again. Like I said earlier. It's a good watch, but uh, no, those are my my key things I didn't really like or care for that they could do a little bit better. All right, so let me put the let me put uh, hold up. I'm just gonna have them over here to to defend me. There we go. Ultra Magnus and Optimus here. He doesn't transform, so there we go. Ultra Magnus, who is that? You don't know who Ultra Magnus that's is, right. bro? So you talking about some old school? I'm trying to take you real old school right here. So that's see y'all even people don't even recognize him because in Transformers the movie he was blue, but actuality what happens is he's like he's like Optimus Prime where he's got the thing here, he's got the trailer, but he's a car carrier, so his car carrier is blue, all right, and then the car carrier transforms and then you put this robot inside of that robot and now he's blue. It's cool. Ultra Madness is awesome, y'all. Boom, but not as awesome as Optimus Prime. I anyway, see you now in your um, world things world I didn't like about this movie. Ain't nobody trying to hear you. You talking about you ain't talking about optics. You ain't talking about nothing. The things <laughs> I didn't like about this uh, about this movie, number one, I didn't care about the characters at all. Like, um, I just didn't really have any real investment in them. Like, I really liked the fact. I thought it was interesting that they grew up in a world that was kind of messed up and beat up. And I really would have liked to have spent some more time in that world. Maybe even more time in that world before getting into the video game so that you can really feel like a true investment in this person and really feel like they're truly the underdog you know it's like he got into the game like really really fast and then as soon as he gets into the game he's playing the race and even though he's the underdog he actually came in first place he just didn't win like but he he was he was the last one he was the first one kong so he was already good at the games and everything i just didn't really feel like he was the underdog, like somebody wanted to see him grow and develop as a character. And I think mm -hmm. just a few more minutes somewhere seeing him downtrodden, you know, more time with his aunt not really like, liking him or his um, her boyfriend beating him up or maybe dealing with some bullies or something that really would have made me like him a little bit more. Other than that, I just I really minutes, didn't care about him. minutes of child abuse would have been good for the movie. You're right. Child abuse yeah. and more, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't sleep on, all side, well, on top of washing machines and playing this game in, hey. in, in abandoned vehicles. Yeah. That, his parents dying, you know, and him having to be, you know, shipped around, not having a home. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more of that would have been made, made the movie better. Hey, I came to see something and I didn't see it. So I didn't <laughs> like the movie, okay? <laughs> All right. The next thing, who is this movie made for? Like Charlie, you made a great example when we were talking about Pacific Rim uh, last week, and you said, as far as the plot, you like it's kind of like a kids' plot sometimes. Like stuff doesn't have to make sense, and that's so, and that's okay if you're watching a kids' movie. And I felt like that sometimes during this movie, not really during the first two halves, but really towards the end. It just stuff like 
It just didn't matter. Like, okay, the main bad guy, he's got this gun. And the number one thing he's going to do is, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot this guy if I get to him. And he rolls up on the, on the guys, and he's got the gun. And they're like, don't shoot him. And he's like, oh, okay. But, like, I'll, I'll, that, that, can I finish me, my statement? Can, no, I, can I finish no, my I gotta, statement? I got to jump in I mean, now. He could have at least... Now. He could have at least shot the apparatus. Like, he didn't have to shoot old dude. Like, he didn't have to be all vindictive and like, I'm going to murder dude. But he at least could have shot the mechanism. He saw the dude was, like, figuring out how to control, take over this company. And that's your whole mission. You sending people out to kill him and you can't at least shoot the machine? Then, like, right after that, like, the attorneys show up and it's like, oh, you got to talk to these attorneys. And they're just like, Here. They're just like, you know, like quiet, like not saying anything, which again would be okay in a kid's movie. That's perfectly fine. But in a movie, this obviously was not a kid's movie because it's got cultural references going all the way back to people my age. So if you're gonna if you're gonna cater to people all the way back from really, really young to really old, then things should make sense. And that just bothered me. Um, the music editing choices. I thought some of the music was really, really good. But I didn't think the music, they didn't play enough of it. Like, um, like if you look at Back to the Future, like Back to the Future has really good music and you're listening to the, you know, you listen to the, the movie and it lets you know, uh, you know, oh, this is when it was supposed to cheer for Marty, you know, da, 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 da. you know, you see him trying to jump from one car to the next. That was cool. And there was a couple scenes in the movie that had that and it made me feel that way. But there's a lot of times it didn't have it. And it's like, okay, I don't, the music would have helped me to care more about the characters. Um, now, my biggest thing that I hated, and I'm going to get into a couple of that didn't make no sense things, but the biggest thing that I hated, well, no, let me not say that. I didn't hate it necessarily because I'm not a gamer myself, but to me, this was the biggest go F yourself to all video games that was said in the last couple sentences of the movie. Danny, I know you picked up on that. At the very last thing he said, again, no after credits, he's like, yeah, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and cut off the, uh, the thing, cut off the, uh, whatever we call it, the framework, <laughs> the Oasis, <laughs> coming off the, uh, for, uh, the Oasis for two days a week, you know, so you guys can actually go and live real life. Like, that's just like saying, like, yeah, go screw you. Like, video games are fine. All that kid stuff that you guys are doing is fine, but you really need to go re live real life. That's a fine thing to say, but not in this movie, not in a movie that is 100% about video games and culture. And, and he ended up by saying, hey, what you need to do is go real, live real life. And here's the thing, Charlie, real <laughs> life sucks. Like in this movie, like, okay, so you want real me to life go deal with being poor and desperate? No, it did why? suck. No, like, but I'm saying, it, but I'm saying like, why if, did it if, suck? If, um, dude, if, what's his name? If, um, if your man, Kai, hold on a sec. If Parcival had taken over the Oasis, right, and he said, we're going to use this money to help build, rebuild our communities and help people be better, then that would be a reason for people to say, okay, let's go out into real life and actually try to build our, our society back into something. No, real life is horrible. <laughs> Why would you want to force people think, to go I think back the game to, has something to I think the game has something to do with real life being horrible. You think real life is horrible because everybody was just playing the game? Yeah, I mean, if you if you take everybody in the world, get them addicted to one thing that they don't socialize with their own family or people that they know outside their own house or inside their house, they just focus on a video game. Yes, that would destroy the world. <laughs> you would have a you would have a horrible <laughs> earth. Nobody, you walk into your house, don't talk to anybody, focus just your job, and you go right home and put your headset on and start playing, and that's when you I actually have a life. So, I think so the what reason you're saying people is that invested, people were so invested in the video game because life was already horrible. They didn't right. have any they didn't have any hope of life being good, so they went into the video game to escape real life. Like that was the whole point of the why the Oasis was so popular was because there was nothing to do in real life. But I but the mm. Oasis has been out for a while. And like it didn't just start on the movie. The Oasis was out for, you know, years. So I, it seemed like it made things like yes, it was a way to get away, but it was like it's like alcohol. Okay, it's like yeah, it helps me helps me <laughs> not think about stuff. But if I keep intaking it over and over, and everybody intakes it, it's probably gonna have some damage to society. 
you know, <laughs> no. So it's kind of like too much of one thing is you know, is a bad thing. So that's but, that's but that goes against the whole plot of the movie. Is the Oasis a good thing or a bad thing? The whole point of the movie was to say the Oasis was a great thing, and this guy was a great guy, and, and you know he's left this thing for us. You know to come back and say that's a bad thing, that's fine, but that wasn't the point of the movie. You know, you can have the Matrix. I mean, the Matrix and this movie are not, with well, the concept is not that much different. You got people trapped in a virtual reality world and the Matrix is bad. Okay, you can say that, but that wasn't the point of this movie. The point is to say that this is a great thing, but yeah, you need to cut it off and go back to real life. I'm going to give you one last thing real quick and I'm going to shut up here. Last thing, uh, th that, that it make no sense. Okay. The inside of the bad guy base has like no security, like whatsoever. It's not even a threat. Like they first captured Artemis, right? And they locked her into this container. And I'm like, oh crap, like that's horrible. Like, for me particularly, I'm like, God, that's horrible. Like you're trapped in this very small container. You can barely sit down. You're trapped with the virtual reality stuff on. You can't take it off, right? And so they, they help her to break free of that. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like she's gonna sneak around and do stuff. No, she just literally see, like walks next to a group of people and there's like a siren or something like, you know, uh, the next uh, team B, you're on your 10 minute break. You can go ahead and go where you want. 10 minute break. Uh, <laughs> what? 10 minute break? They get breaks? What it? Wait a second. And then during her break, she can just go anywhere she wants to go. She can, a, a prisoner, supposedly a prisoner, can just walk right into the CEO's office <laughs> without, and then go from the CEO's office to like the main battle floor. That, what? That's, that just, hey, that is spend more time this. in the real world, the security would have been better. Feel yeah. might be right. Yeah, right. Everybody <laughs> like this. Everybody over here like this. <laughs> right past everybody, like, oh, I ain't got hey, over here. Hey, all up Bro, in the just chilling. Hey, let me tell you something. There's somebody that's unplugged from that thing that's making a killing, robbing and stealing from everybody else. <laughs> yes, they have all this stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Man. All right, closing thoughts. Um, so I'll, Charlie, I'll let you give the uh, the final thought on that. So, Danny, closing thoughts on that. Should people see this movie? Um, I still and give us your, and give us your closing thoughts as well. Like, give us your actual closing thoughts too. Even though I didn't enjoy it, um, even though I didn't get what I wanted from it, I think it was visually good and it did have a lot for people. There was a good um, social commentary. There was a good themes in the movie, and I think it was. Um, at least well executed. I think the movie was a solid movie. So I think people people should um, see it, um, but I won't see it again. Um, <laughs> and with that said, with that said, I'm glad to be back. I appreciate y'all. Even though we didn't get the King Supreme uh, to where we wanted to do it, we're gonna finish up with Ace Blade. So be looking for that Kickstarter on um, May 5th, Free Time Book Day. Um, but until next time. They visit my friends. I'm out. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say, watching the movie, I wasn't impacted, like, at all. Like, you know, like you see E.T., you know, one of his greatest movies, or you watch something like uh, Gremlins or Back to the Future. I'm trying to think of anything recent. You know, even the Avengers movie, it's like, gosh, it's like, man, that was such an amazing movie. I can't wait to see it again. It was like, I usually feel really impacted. Like, I wasn't impacted by this movie at all, like. I don't need like like you just said, Danny. I don't need to see it again. Well, the only reason I would see it again was it would be to try to find all those Easter eggs because that was pretty cool that there was so much stuff packed into it. I might be willing to watch it on Netflix, <laughs> you know, to to that to to see all that type of stuff. But definitely not going to the theater again for me. I, it's a pass for me. It's not a terrible movie, but honestly, I don't. I, I'm not going to recommend people that hey, you need to go see this movie. Mr. Charlie Taylor, it's all on you, man. It's your, it's your uh, moment to shine. I think you definitely should go check it out. Uh, the movie was pretty. It was I, I liked it. Enjoy it. You're gonna enjoy the movie if you watch the stuff we had to watch the last few weeks since Black Panther. This movie is like gold because <laughs> last week watching Pacific Rim, I felt like I was gonna die. So this movie, maybe it got an extra boost because you made me watch Pacific Rim. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> but this this movie has everything in in it. You know, you're gonna have a good ride. It's not the best movie. It is not it's not it's not like you know these you know Avenger movies and some of the like you know some of the really really good movies that are just memorable. But it's a good movie. You'll enjoy it. You'll have a good time. It looks beautiful. And you know, you'll have fun. It's a fun it's a fun movie to watch. I probably won't go back to the theater to watch it. I'll probably, you know, wait till it come out because I'm not necessarily, you know, engulfed by video games. I'm more of a, you know, a Madden guy. I play sports, real life games. But um, you know, but I, I think I think everybody, you know, you should have worth it's worth the watch. You know, go go check it out if you want to check it out. But you know, the real thing is coming in two weeks. Two weeks, people. Two weeks, Thanos is coming to kill somebody. Hard to kill everybody. Somebody, everybody, people. And everybody gonna die. I'ma cry. I'm gonna like, okay, like the review, like <laughs> kill everybody. I don't like it no more. I hate you, Russo. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. That's, that's all I'm really focused on right now. I'm ready for it. We had Cafe Sport Easy. It's on a, a great event. We got, you know, a lot of cosplay characters coming in. We have face painting. We're gonna have food, drinks, and bowling, arcade, all you can do. So if you like to go see uh, Avenger movies and Marvel movies, and you don't want to leave after the movie and just go home and chat on your virtual friends, you know, you actually want to see real people and just fucking enjoy and have a good time all night. Come hang out with us, Frank Cinnabol and Carrie. Uh, you can check us out on eBright, uh, Eventbrite. After eBright, Eventbrite. Check it out. Just look up uh, Marvel's uh, MovieCon. It will pop right up. Or you can check us out on Facebook, on our Facebook page, or Infinity War on MovieCon. All right, guys, I'm out. Get out of that virtual world. It's Tuesday, and color we'll commentary will morning. color commentary will be at the event, both uh, physically. And Dan is going to be coming at us from the Oasis. <laughs> so make sure, you guys, make sure you guys check that out. Thank you again for watching yet another episode of Color Commentary. Please make sure to like our video if you liked it. Check down below the video and you can look at the description. And that will link you to other playlists like um, Danny Does Discovery and um, uh, Rashad's Review and uh chilling with chuck and all the other many many reviews that you, we've brought to you thanks again for checking us out make sure to subscribe to survive and again thank you for checking out color commentary views from a virtual side peace and it's gotta be and when she calls me daddy, hey, hey, sometimes, hey, 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 oh, oh, I know we live, hi, 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 Did you make the video private before you started this live stream? And it's gotta be Phenomenal's project. That's the only thing that's soothing my soul. Turn on the TV to. Pop